All right, so this video is about a giant topic, one, again, that I know very little about, uh, and that topic is CSS. And so, uh, you know, there's been a bunch of videos here that I've made about the DOM, the document object model, web pages, HTML pages, JavaScript, how they control HTML pages. Let's just take a step back for a moment and, and, and look at the pieces we know about and what's this third piece that I'm adding. So this web page, this thing that you're seeing in the browser or in the sort of browser window of the P5.js editor where I'm writing all of the code, there, the, the thing that this page loads is a file called index.html, okay? So, and this is not a good pen, I'm switching pens. In this file, there is some content written into that file. For example, uh, there is a header that's at the top of the page. There's a paragraph. This file is also referring to some JavaScript code. Uh, it's referring to a bunch of different things like the p5.js library file, uh, our own code, which is in a file called sketch.js. And in those files, we're doing some JavaScript stuff like making a canvas, drawing a circle to that canvas, and perhaps even as we've seen in previous videos, making other DOM elements like more paragraphs and affecting those and changing those elements. So you can think of uh, these pieces as HTML. This is really the structure. And you could also say like initial content in a way, like what's on the page when it first loads of that web page. JavaScript is logic, code, things that can handle events, store information, make all sorts of magic happen. This is what you can think of as the behavior of the page. So this is where you and I and everybody else who's doing this stuff is writing code to control what's happening on that page over time based on user interaction, based on some mathematical algorithm, based on whatever you might fancy. If you like to draw rainbows in a canvas, Unicorns, do that with JavaScript. Uh, I'm adding unicorns to my repertoire here. Oh, is that rainbows? Okay, so um, the, the last piece here that I wanna talk about is this idea of CSS. And CSS stands for Cascading Style Sheets. I don't know why they're cascading. Probably has to do with some sort of like nesting and whatever. And somebody on the internet who really knows this stuff will hopefully write in the comments why it's cascading. But the key word there is style. So if you want to affect various aspects of the layout of this page, you want the canvas to actually float on the right side of the page rather than the left side of the page. You want to change the font that's in the paragraphs. You want to change the background color of a paragraph. You want to, any, just about anything that you can imagine that has to do with the visual look and feel of that page can be controlled with this idea of CSS. Now, once again, we're in the same place as we were with HTML you could write HTML into that index.html file, or you could dynamically sort of insert HTML elements into the page using JavaScript. You can write, you can sort of in, give some initial content, you can also control those elements using JavaScript. The same thing is true with CSS. There is a kind of file, the camera went off. There is a kind, another kind of file you could write uh, I've disappeared from the world, but I am still here. <laughs> you cannot see me, but I am still here. I will never leave until every one last person on Earth, actually, most people on Earth don't really need to know about CSS, or maybe they should, I don't really know. I, I, that was a terrible idea, but you're here watching this video. Maybe CSS is useful to you. I'm gonna keep going. Um, <laughs> the HTML file the JavaScript file, now you can also add information about styles to another kind of file, named maybe style, named whatever you want, .css, .js for JavaScript, .html for HTML, .css. Now, we're in, uh, what I meant by saying we're in the same situation is I wanna talk about how do you add that style stuff to style.css, and that are, and or how might you add style dynamically on the fly based on user interaction, based on some set of behaviors in JavaScript. This is the bigger picture here, and then there's lots of details to fill in. Boy, am I rambling about this, but hopefully it's making some sense. Okay, so how does CSS work? CSS works on a, sing, a, a couple different principles. One is this idea of a selector. So you need to have a selector, meaning 
what are the things that you want to select to style? Do you want to select all the paragraphs on the page? Do you want to select just this one particular paragraph? Do you want to select the canvas? Do, what, what DOM elements do you want to select in order to style? After you, say, after you specify that selector, so for example, let's say you want to style all the paragraph elements on the page. Your selector would be P. Then you need some open and close curly brackets, much like you always do when you're doing these kinds of things to denote the beginning and end of the stuff that will, the style information that will be applied to that paragraph. Once you have that, all you need are a series of name value pairs. This looks kind of like a JavaScript object, but the syntax is a little bit different. These name value pairs are like, what's the property you want to style and what's the value for that style? For example, I want to style the background color and I want the background color to be black or white. That's white. <laughs> oh, I want it to be like pinkish. F zero F. So you can be asking your question like, oh my God, what? <laughs> Well, what is that? That looks terrifying to me. There's like a pound symbol and then a letter and then a number. So there's a lot of things to learn. This is a certain kind of a special way of writing a color information. You know, I think maybe this would have been a little bit simpler if I just wrote the word pink here or purple here. That would also work. There are a variety of different ways. So now the question is, what are the kinds of things that can go here? You know, font size is one of them, I think. So if I want to like change the font size, there's so much that could go here. How do you know what the possibilities are? How do you add that to your CSS? And then how do you do that with JavaScript? <laughs> how much time do we have? Uh, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna, let's go to the code and look at how this, some of this works. Uh, okay, and I, I've disappeared, but I'm gonna come back to life. Sunshine rain down upon me and give me some light and have, I shall appear now in front of the camera. Okay, I have to turn this down. Uh, okay, so here I am with a P5.js project in the P5.js editor. I'm going to run this and you can see there, again, we're back here. I have this H1 element, this paragraph element, this canvas, another paragraph element, a button. Some of these elements are written here into the HTML body, right? In advance, these are HTML elements that appear on the page as soon as it loads. Some of these elements are created with JavaScript made dynamically when the program runs, create a paragraph, create a button. Okay, this is where we are. How do I start to style? Let's style that paragraph. Okay, so actually um, what I'm gonna do, even though I said over here, uh, come back, even though I said over here you can cre I'm gonna create a separate CSS file, I'll do that in a later video. What actually, this button's a little hyperactive. What actually I think I would like to do is show you how you can actually add CSS style information directly into the HTML page. So inside of this head tag where I'm referring to JavaScript files, I could also potentially refer to some style information. So what's that syntax? Paragraph, I want to select all of the paragraphs on the page and assign them a background color, which is uh, purple. I wish I could type rainbow there. Do you think it works if I type rainbow there? I doubt it. Okay, so now if I save and I run this again, we can see, look, this paragraph element has a purple background. This paragraph element has a purple background. You know what? It's very hard for me to see the text. So I think if I say this, color, it refers to the color of the text inside the paragraph, I think. And now you can see I have white text with a purple background. It looks a little crowded in there. So something that I might add to this is some padding. And how much padding? How about eight pixels, PX for pixel? So I'm going to do this. And look, ah, look at this. I've got some nice padding now. So this is the basic idea of CSS. I need to select something on the page and then give it some properties. What's the property? What's the value? What's the property? What's the value? How do you know what all these possible properties are? Well, you need to look this stuff up. You could get books, you could watch other videos that, where someone really knows about CSS is talking about this. But, um, but uh, and this is where it's, so, so let's look for this briefly in a moment. And I have a couple more minutes left. Uh, I am going to, um, 
Uh, ah, so I am on here, developer.mozilla. Um, so this is one place. I'll put some links in the description for this video, but here is a URL of where I could find some information about CSS. I'm going to remove this part here. This is a CSS reference. There's a tutorial. There's demos. Uh, I want to look at the ref, an exhaustive, I'm exhausted already, an exhaustive reference. I'm going to look at the exhaustive reference, and I'm going to see, like, look, these are all of the possible things I could add. There's so much. I can just keep scrolling and scrolling and scrolling and scrolling. But we can look under, I can look for, like, background color, and you can see background color is right over here. I can click on it. And what do I see now? I see here are some examples of of different ways that I can call background color. I could say red, I could say RGB, I could say current color, all sorts of ways. So this is a topic for another time, another video for you to look on your own. There's another CSS reference that I like to use, if I could find it in my history here. Um, I think it's this one, right? So I'll include a link to this. This is a nice reference of all sorts of possible uh, parameters in CSS. The things that I want to focus on in, in my videos is less about the full encompassing of all of the CSS reference and more about two things. One is, this, how, how do these selectors work? What are other ways that I could specifically address a single paragraph or only some paragraph? And there's a lot of ways you can use these selectors, so I want to get to that. And the other thing I want to get to is how do you do style dynamically in JavaScript? So, um, with P5.js specifically. So let's take at least another video. I'll, um, 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 one of my future videos, I'm going to talk more about selectors. But in this particular video, I want to look at the style function. So here, if I come back, if I quit Chrome for a second and I come back to this, we can see that these particular elements, now these paragraph elements are all styled based on the hard-coded style information that's in the HTML file inside of the style tags. But another thing I can do is right over here, I can, for any HTML, any element that I create with P5, and later I'm going to show you any element that I access in P5, whether it was created or not, I can call a function called style, which then requires just two arguments. What are those arguments? The name of the style property, the value of the style property. So if I were to put right here in quotes, background dash color, and then I were to say in here in quotes, pink, you can see, look at this. This particular element is still getting the style from the HTML page. This particular element, whoop, I'm not there. <laughs> uh, this particular element, down here is getting the style from my code. So the, the, when I apply a piece of styling dynamically in code, uh, it's going to overwrite the style that was originally set up in the HTML page. So there's a lot of pieces here. And for you, essentially, if you're following these videos along, what I would suggest you do is try adding some style to the HTML file in the same way that I did here. Try adding some styles this way. What other tags might you reference? Try adding some styles this way. What happens if you add styles to other kinds of elements that aren't just paragraph elements? And lastly, and I'll do this for you really quickly, set something style with an event. OK, let's think about this. For example, what if I say, uh, what if I were to say button.mousepressed change style, right? So now I am attaching the change style event to the press of this button. And what is that change style event? It's a function that I need to write, right? The code inside this function right here will execute when I click the mouse on that button. And maybe I'll change the text style to pink. And maybe I'll give it a lot more padding, because who doesn't love padding? <laughs> Jazz hands. I don't know. I feel like that's going to be that's JavaScript the musical. That's my first song. Who doesn't love padding? <laughs> you with me on that? Okay. Uh, so now, if we look at this, everything's got its default style. I'm going to trigger that event. I got some more padding and uh, a pink background. So, and you know, maybe what I want to do, I just I got to do a little bit more. Say text mouse over, change style. 
whoops, and then uh, I'll say button, I'll say text mouse out, revert style, and what I can do here, and I'm going to, I'm just showing you some other things, uh, revert style, and background purple, padding, 8 pixels. So let's take out the button event for a second. I'm using mouse out and mouse over. I mouse over, I mouse out, I mouse over, I mouse out, I mouse over. That's a very rhythmic. Um, so you can see here that you can start to highlight things, make things happen based on button presses, based on mouse over, mouse out, based on the movement of a slider as we saw in the previous video. So many possibilities. So now you have something to work with. Try adding some style to the HTML page. Try adding some style using the style function. See what types of elements, what types of designs you can make. And I'm going to come back and look at this again and again and again in several videos, looking at other different types of scenarios with more events and more ways of selecting elements, which uh, classes and IDs is the topic for that. And just as a reminder, uh, go and look in those references that will be linked below as to where you can find all this stuff. So I'm five minutes over time. Not that that is relevant to you, especially if you're watching this sometime in the future, like in the year 2000. <laughs> that was a while ago, I guess. But in my, in my childhood, the year 2000 seems like very far away. Uh, the year 3000? Is anybody watching this? If you're watching this in the year 3000, please go and get my brain out of that cryogenic thing that it's in. <sighs> and I don't know. Eh. Do something with it. Talk, talk to me about rainbows. Okay, goodbye, and I'll see you in a future video.